What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name is Fareed. As a part of today's video, I'm excited to announce the results are finally in for Project Catalyst funding round number 11. In today's video, I want to highlight and just do a brief comparison of the stats for funding round number 10 versus 11, but then also highlight some of the biggest winners or some of the biggest projects that have been awarded Project Catalyst funding. So let's jump into this update. As it states here, this was released by Daniel Rabar, who has been working around the clock to review, comment, and make sure everybody is up to date surrounding everything with Project Catalyst. So it reads, we're delighted to announce that the official Catalyst results are now in. Congrats to all the participants for this particular round. A little bit further, it states that about 8,000 wallets have collectively cast over 300,000 individual votes to determine the 300 funded projects in this particular round. Jumping over to this next tab, I wanna just do a brief comparison with Project Catalyst funding round number 10. So funding round number 10 was had after about a year or so of a break with Project Catalyst. We saw a quick turnaround with about three months between the announcement of funding round number 10 and funding round number 11. Now there were three big updates I wanna quickly highlight. The first was the fact that you can no longer be added as a lead on more than five proposals. If you are added as a lead for more than five proposals, only the most recent five would actually have been eligible for um, being voted upon in order to be funded. This was due to the fact that we saw a lot of people trying to game the system by putting out 30 or 40 different proposals, which obviously is not attainable if all those were to be funded. So that was one of the biggest changes that came in between funding round number 10 and funding round number 11. The second change was surrounding the downvote. So you no longer have the ability to downvote. You can only upvote or abstain from voting for a particular project. I believe the very last update was just surrounding the categories so last or in funding round number 10 there were 13 categories broken down by different objectives or problems so this particular round in funding round number 11 we had um, six different categories which was about half of the number that we had before but this time you had to either um, go into catalyst open which was basically um any sort of idea that didn't fit the other categories. There was a catalyst improvement category, but then there was a solution concept or a product phase. So with the product, that's where you had an existing product and you're looking for funding. If you were within the solutions phase, you had something that was at least showable as an MVP. And then if you just had a concept, you just were bringing a brand new idea. So those were the three changes. Now jumping back over into the stats, as we begin this comparison, we had 13 challenges in funding round number 10, again, compared to the six as a part of funding round number 11. Now, what's interesting is that we had a total of 408,000 votes cast in funding round number 10 compared to 300,000 votes cast in funding round number 11. So we had 25% less voters in funding round number 11 compared to funding round number 10. In terms of proposals, we had 1,400 back in funding round number 10 versus 920 in funding round number 11. So this was a 35% reduction in terms of actual proposals. Now, if we take a look at the number of proposals that were actually funded, we had 92 funded in funding round number 10, whereas we now have 300 funded in round number 11. So that was about a 13% approval rate back in funding round number 10 versus a 32% approval rate in funding round number 11. So a lot more projects being included, but there's also less competition, right? There were, um, let's see here, 35% less proposals presented in this particular round. Again, I think a lot of that was due to the fact that we now have that limitation on the max number of proposals that could have actually been submitted. Now, keep in mind that the total amount of ADA, which was distributed between the two rounds, was exactly the same, which was 50 million ADA. Obviously, the price of ADA has changed. It's increased dramatically since the last funding round where it was trading at about 27 cents, where it's now trading at about 60 cents as of this morning. So one thing I want to post before we just continue any further is just what can we do to make sure 
obviously that we still have high quality projects submitting proposals, but that we continue to have more voters turning out because this time we did see a pretty big decrease compared to last year's proposals. Now, also keep in mind that because we just have a lower number of proposals overall, that there aren't as many proposals to vote for. So that could have contributed to that particular number. What I will do is try to dig up the total number of wallets, which again, this year was 8,000 and try to compare that to the total number of wallets that voted for the last funding round or funding round number 10. Now, if you guys want to actually get access to these results, they do have an official website, which is available at projectcatalyst.io forward slash funds forward slash 11 forward slash voting results. I'll go ahead and leave the link to that down below as always. Now, this is a slightly different breakdown than before, and I actually appreciated this a little bit better than what we had last year. But some of the projects I want to highlight are going to be within the product section or the product category. So again, these are projects that have already launched on mainnet and they already have a functional project or a product for the community to use. So one of the biggest winners was Indigo Protocol. They have their V2 audit now being funded via Project Catalyst. This has been a point of contention with Project Catalyst, given the fact that people don't believe that it's actually the community's job or that it shouldn't be taken from Project Catalyst or that funding from Project Catalyst shouldn't be used to pay for um, audits. But I want to just maybe kind of pose that to you. Do you think that projects should be able to have their code reviews being funded by something like Project Catalyst? So Indigo being awarded 450,000 ADA. We also have an open source identity wallet coming in for Atala Prism, as well as some pretty big interoperability upgrades. One of the first ones here is the onboarding of Ethereum and the EVM ecosystem to Cardano via the Rosen Bridge. I highlighted the Rosen Bridge, which is currently live right now. Um, anybody who is a Cardano SPO can also sign up to be a Rosen Bridge watcher in order to be rewarded with the um, Rosen token by providing security and just watching and verifying transactions being done through the Rosen Bridge. But simply put, this is a, a connection between Cardano and Ergo, and they look at their onboarding the EVM ecosystem through that bridge. Scrolling down in terms of interoperability, we have an update coming in here, which was approved. And this is with the Maya protocol. So they're a bridgeless native swap protocol utilizing a forked version of the Thor chain. I did have a Lux here and um, Marvin Burton from the official Maestro team on the channel to talk a little bit more about exactly how this works. So please check out that fully dedicated video, but that breaks down what the Maya protocol will be bringing. So congratulations to that team. I'm excited to finally be able to get these big interoperability upgrades into Cardano, and I look forward to creating more content surrounding Maya. We've also got the adoption of Handle Chat by the Core Labs team or by the Ada Handle team. This is going to be a peer to peer permissionless communication protocol built on top of Cardano. So imagine being able to reach out to other handle owners or other Cardano members and being able to chat right with them directly utilizing on chain technology. Right below that, we have some security updates. We have Cerberus being funded as well as Endcoins with their scalability solution and a trustless peer to peer fiat to crypto on ramp. So imagine being able to circumvent something like Binance, being able to circumvent something like Coinbase and be able to actually utilize ZK technology to onboard into the Cardano ecosystem. So I did have Vlad to chat a little bit about this as well, but congratulations to that team. Right below them, we have Charlie 3, which was able to have a huge sweep here. So they had a total of five proposals. All five of them were able to get funded. So they're going to be building out their Oracle infrastructure. And I believe they're going to be upping their game when it comes to also providing more free benefits to the community and also going to be targeting a sidechain operation as well. So a lot there to celebrate with the C3 team, especially given the fact that a lot of their proposals in funding round number 10 were not agreed upon or were not voted through. So again, it goes to really show that even if you were not funded through um, Project Catalyst funding round number 11, don't give up hope, continue to submit your proposals. And as they get better and as other teams get funded, right, there will be more opportunity for some of these newer ideas and projects that have not been funded in prior rounds to finally get their funding. So those are just a couple that I wanted to highlight there. 
I'll go and leave the link to this down below. If you guys want to check out the entire list, they do have a CSV file that is available. Again, there are just so many projects here. I can't highlight all of them, but I want to just take a quick minute to number one, just provide you guys some of the stats and then also just give you guys the resource that you guys need in order to check these out here on your own. So again, it does seem like, um, there are always going to be some winners and some losers. One loser that I am a little bit bummed out about is going to be Dex Hunter. They were launching a perpetuals protocol and that did not get funded. So keep in mind, depending on how much you're asking for, if you get a substantial amount of votes, but there is not enough remaining in the actual pool for your particular category, you may not be able to get funded. So even though the Dex Hunter team had a lot of votes, they were asking for quite a bit of ADA. And by the time that the um, Project Catalyst votes were actually um, down to the Dex Hunter's protocol being funded, there was just not enough ADA in the reserves for them to get funded. So what we saw were smaller projects that were asking for much less being funded with the last bit of the reserves for that particular category. Hopefully that makes sense there. Um, again, keep in mind that each category has a different allocation of ADA that can be awarded to them. And depending on who gets the most amount of votes, they are able to pull from that pot first. And then they just continue to pull all the way till they get to an amount um, that is no longer available to be given to a particular project. And at that point, they just continue to scroll down the list until a project that is requesting less than what's in the reserves can actually be funded. So it's not always the case that the most votes get funded. It also depends on how much is actually left within the reserves, which also dictates who's able to get some of that funding. That will do it here for today's video. Again, a quick update. Wanted to give you guys some comparison numbers and just give you guys an update surrounding Project Catalyst. If you are a team that was funded, I want to congratulate you. I know it's a lot of work just from prepping the proposals themselves and then making your rounds around the entire Cardano community. And if any of those projects that were funded did come on this channel, again, I want to thank you for your time and just for sharing here what your guys' visions and plans are. So I look forward to keeping up with all these projects as they begin to deliver here in 2024. It does look to be promising with a lot of interoperability on the way, a lot of scalability, and all just major upgrades that should benefit the entire Cardano ecosystem. That said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by Dapp Central and you want more content like this, highlighting everything going on in Cardano, make sure to subscribe. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me surrounding anything we've talked about, then please make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.